So you are using <laughs> an eye to eye strap, right? So this has got eye. these loops going through. And it's not my favorite way to do it. I'd rather use a continuous loop. Yep. Because now I've got to line both of these up at where I want the top of my rock or a continuous loop, like I can just get it right in here. So this is kind of a pain, but this is what we got, right? Exactly. And well, there is a continuous loop right behind oh, you. It's like Christmas. <laughs> this job's gonna go great. <laughs> With the eye to eye, you tried to find the center point of the rock. So let's say we wanted this to stand up. Is this the top right here? We lift up a side of the rock, get this underneath it, and cinch it right through the center, going like this. And then what happens is now you have a balancing act because you're trying to make sure it's right on center. And so the rock isn't leaning this way or that way. The other drawback to that is when I want to get the strap out, you're right through the beefy part of the rock, right in the center. All right, we are getting ready to build aqua blocks. We have two layers of 50 going in. What we did was we just kind of laid out some of the panels in the right configuration to see if everything was gonna fit. You can also see this little orange line over here. That's gonna get pump vaults. So pump vaults will be located in this back corner, pumping water up into the waterfall. are built, fabric is in place, pump faults are excavated out. Next step, continue going in with more of the geotextile fabric. Remember that stuff not only acts as a cushion, but because of the three-dimensional way it's created, it increases the load bearing capacity for the liner. So it really increases the strength of the overall system. Our liner strapped up over here. We're gonna bring that in. We're gonna try to unroll it out in this direction. So Mark is bringing in some more of the fabric just to get this little edge here because that liner should come all the way back to here, which will make waterfall construction a lot easier in the long run so it's going to be a little bit of a struggle right now pulling the liner in place once it's in place though it's going to make life a lot easier and it never fails as soon as we start putting the geotextile fabric out the wind increases and stuff blows all over the place So next step is going to be aqua blocks. Pump vaults are going in right away. We're going to get some of that crushed gravel in and around it. And then what Brian's going to do, he's going to start putting all the blocks around from those vaults. So what we did was, if you remember, we laid out the aqua blocks in the right position, kind of like an L in that corner, located the pump vaults. Once those are in place, then we start coming in with all of those blocks to uh, lock everything in place. We'll fill around that with some crushed gravel. And we have to do some extensions on top of those blocks as well, or on top of those pump vaults. And then we should be in good shape. backfilling process. Ryan started dumping the first load of sand over here. What we want to do is we want to do opposite opposing sides. So we're going to do a little there, do a little on this side. And that's because as we're backfilling it, if you do too much, it could push them a little bit. So we're just going to slowly make our way around.
everybody, it's Brian back here with Team Aquascape. It is day three-ish, I don't, I don't know. We're a little bit behind. Yesterday, product didn't actually get out here till about three o'clock. So we went and hiked around Utah a little bit and there's worse ways to uh, spend your free time. But of course, we felt bad that we were start getting so far behind on this project. So today is hump day for sure. And coincidentally enough, it's Thursday. So big, big goals today. We want to try to get a lot of the, a lot of the lower waterfall kind of set, a lot of the boulder set on top of our 3,000 gallon system. Yesterday at three o'clock, we went at it pretty hard. And so I wanna show you what we got done yesterday and then kind of point out some of the things we hope to get done today. This isn't gonna work all day long right here. This like standing around, <laughs> it can't happen. But we got a lot done yesterday. So we've got a 30 by 50 foot liner in here. The reason we went such a big liner is I knew we were gonna carve out over here and I didn't wanna do an overlap coming down into the reservoir. I always like to dig that out. In fact, let me get a little closer and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So yesterday we put in a hundred of these aqua blocks. Now you notice these things are double stacked. And when we double stack them, we actually lose a panel. And so here's all the leftover panels right over here. But we can double stack these. In fact, you can stack them up to five high if you wanted to. And I think that's what's so nice about the aqua blocks. It's a very modular system. So if you don't have the space to go this way, you can go this way. If you don't have the space to go this way or this way, you can go that way. And so we've got 50 double stacked cubes sitting in here, which gives us 100 total cubes, which is a little bit more than 3,000 gallons. We've got fabric, then our liner, then fabric, and everything's back. We've got our vaults over here, so our plumbing's gonna run from here all the way up to there. And then we've got our big liner in here. Now notice how we dug this shelf out. So rather than set the big giant boulders over there, right up on top of the aqua blocks, we dug this area out so I could put my frame rocks further back rather than right up here in front. So we're gonna come in here, we'll probably start setting some smaller rocks down in through here, maybe even backfill with a little gravel, and then hopefully today start framing out this waterfall. And if things go really well, even get up into this. But we've got a lot to do today. You can see Mark and AJ already working on digging out. We just got some weird folds down into this corner here, so they're just fixing that. But with that guy, that guy, these two guys, and this guy, hopefully we can get all the way up into here. Stay tuned. All right, we have an incredible selection of rocks to work with, and this is the most important rock. Actually, second most important. Most important one's gonna be the last one, because that's when the project's wrapped up, but this first guy's gonna set the stage. Brian, show us what you are doing from a scrapping technique. And now, you obviously aren't watching all of Team Aquascape because we did a video not too long ago about how important the second and the third and the fourth are, <laughs> just so they didn't feel left out, right? <laughs> but the first rock is kind of important, I think, because it just sets more of the pace at which the entire job's gonna go, yep. right? If this one goes in smooth, then everything else should go in smooth. It's a good day. So yeah, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so you are using <laughs> an eye-to-eye -eye strap, right? Right? So this has got these loops going through. And it's not my favorite way to do it. I'd rather use a continuous loop. Yep. Because now I've got to line both of these up at where I want the top of my rock for a continuous loop. Like I can just get it right in here. So this is kind of a pain, but this is what we got. Right? Exactly. And well, there is a continuous loop right behind oh, you. It's like Christmas. <laughs> this job's going to go great. <laughs> So yeah, watch how much easier this is. So now this rock is what? Probably 3,000 pounds, ton yeah. and a half. Yeah. And we are lifting this up with literally a nylon strap. I know there are a lot of people that like to use chains and cables and that type of stuff. Shut but the, the beauty of these nylon straps is they are very durable, but they also are easy to work with in a liner type of a system. The other thing that I like about them is because of this wide, flat surface on it, it really kind of grabs and holds onto that rock, which is nice. Now you would never guess that this uh, piece of nylon would lift this up but this could actually handle a rock probably four times that size easily easy. without any problem easy, easy, easy. so look how quick and easy that was with the continuous loop these are uh these were a, a, a godsend when we found these ones so um, we used to do it ago. with the eye to eye you tried to find the center point of the rock so let's say we wanted this to stand up is this the top right here we lift up a side of the rock get this underneath it and cinch it right through the center going like this and then what happens is now you have a balancing act because you're trying to make sure it's right on center and so the rock isn't leaning this way or that way the other drawback to that is when i want to get the strap out you're right through the beefy part of the rock right in the center here the way this is done when he pulls this up the tension's going to really force this 
And then when I want to get the strap out, I just pull it off from the edges without having to go through the center of the rock. So really easy and fast and efficient way of doing it. And more stable. This is actually 10 times stronger than going eye to eye. There's a lot of stress on the eye to eye. In fact, it even has a rating here of what that looks like versus a loop. Like look at when you go eye to eye, you're at 64. When you use it as a loop, you're twice the lifting capacity. Watch us lift this in the strap break. <laughs> so the other thing that you're using is we have a, a clevis over here. You have a nice lifting loop over on the back. The beauty of using that, obviously safety, gets it further out from the machine versus going on the teeth as well. Actually, that's probably, that's 3,000, that might be 4,000 pounds, that's a big rock. Don't like that little corner right there. Custom home under construction, so access is always a challenge. Thankfully, we don't have lawn, fences, and that type of stuff to deal with, but we still have some stuff here. So what we're gonna do is try to open up a little bit wider lane for him to get through there, just so we don't have any issues at all. And again, he's a good operator, but things happen. You're not paying attention to something, and you just swing that bucket a little bit, and you're taking out a section of that roof, and we do not want to be responsible. Coming. All right, rock's in position. You have a couple options here. So what I want to point out, tackle block's extremely strong. We use them underneath parking lot, underneath parking lots. You can drive heavy equipment over them, but that's when you have gravel on top of it. So you could still have point load issues with this. We have a couple options. One is we put a bed of river rock on top of this to help diffuse the weight out. Another way we can do it is we can take some of these extra panels that we have. So these are the, what we call the A panel. So this is the large panel that's used with the aqua box. We have additional ones of these and that's because of the double stack configuration that we did. So that means we have 50 additional block panels to work with. So we technically have enough to cover this entire space. This is gonna take the place of the river rock. It's gonna help spread out the load a little bit and help support some of these massive boulders. 